So welcome everybody. Uh, this is a gentle vinyasa yoga class and so the idea is taking a very accessible approach to um, opening the body up in all of its ranges um, but also developing strength within that range of motion. So it's quite different from yin yoga in that we're trying to activate certain muscle groups to keep our posture really upright um, and then open the body from there. Um, so in this class uh, we'll need two blocks and a yoga strap. If you don't have the strap, you can grab a belt from home. Um, anything you can loop around your foot. And if you don't have blocks, uh, no problem, you'll be okay without them. You may also want to grab a pillow that you can put underneath your knee. Uh, when we get to some of those low lunge positions, it's just nice to have a little bit of extra padding underneath the knee joint. Uh, so we'll actually get started in standing today. You can uh, come to the front of your mat and take your feet wide apart. A little wider than hip width and we'll just explore the foundation of rooting through the feet a little bit. So the movement's going to come from your hip joints. You're going to lift your toes engaging the front of the shin and then try turning one foot in and out. But see if you can feel the movement coming from the actual hip joint. So we're pivoting over the heel but the actual femur, the thigh bone is moving in the hip socket. And then do the same with the other leg. And so if the feet are parallel, our thighs are parallel, that's our neutral position. From there, we can turn the feet out a little bit and fall forward into ragdoll, holding on to opposite elbows, letting the head and neck go loose. And we'll spend the first few minutes in that posture. Oh, I'm sharing someone else's screen here by accident. I don't know how that happened, but I'll figure that out on Zoom. Meeting settings, uh, no. Okay, there we go, back to normal. <laughs> so as you were, you can go into ragdoll position. And so in that ragdoll pose, the knees can be generously bent. I'll show you the side view. Hold on to opposite elbows, big bend of the knees and Try to play with uh, rocking the weight a little bit forward into the feet. Maybe you feel the toes gripping more. Can you press through the balls of the feet as well? And then we can also shift the weight back a little bit into the heels and see if you can feel that connection through the heels, activating the glutes, the buttock muscles. Uh, a great cue to activate the glutes in any position where you're standing or where the soles of the feet are on the ground is bend your knees a little bit more. Okay, and now reverse the bend of the knees, squeezing the buttocks to go a little higher. Do that a few times, see if you feel the glutes activating. And the more we can support the hip joint from the glutes, uh, the more the spine is supported. So we can relax around the spine a little more, the core can soften. Can you let the back of the neck relax? And then just sway from side to side, letting the head hang loose. Feel free to straighten one leg, leaning over the bent leg, and then switch. Lean over your bent leg, straighten the other leg. And continue playing around with that, going side to side slowly. If it's uncomfortable to straighten the leg, that's okay. You can bend your knees instead. A few more deep breaths through the nose. And then bending the knees, you can take hold of your yoga strap, tuck your chin, push off your heels, engaging the buttocks, and slowly roll up through your spine, coming all the way up to standing. And then we'll roll the shoulders up and back a few times, big circles in the shoulder joints. So try to lift the shoulders up to the ears, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then draw the shoulders away from the ears. Bring your shoulders forward, spreading the shoulder blades, lift up to the ears, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then relax down. Again, shoulders forward, spreading the shoulder blades, rounding the back, shoulders up to the ears, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then relax down. And do that a few more times. You can make it a more fluid movement. I call this a shoulder loop, or big circles in the shoulder. And then we'll 
take the yoga strap in the hands and then you can hold it uh, wider than shoulder width. So about another foot or so, as much slack as you can get. From there, we'll hold the ends of the strap and then with an inhale, your legs are parallel, press the arms up. And then with an exhale, come down. Again, try to tear the strap apart, elbows straight as you reach up on the inhale and exhale to come down. And then one more like that. Inhale, reaching up. This time on the exhale, try bringing the strap behind you, about the height of your chest, and then inhale, reach straight up. So that's obviously the more challenging part. Exhaling, bringing the strap back. Inhale, reaching up. And do a few more like that. If it's hard to keep your elbows straight, um, you can hold the strap a little bit looser. If you're finding it really easy to keep your elbows straight, just keep doing what you're doing. You might choose to make it a little bit smaller. And then notice some of the compensations that the body does uh, to escape opening the chest. We tend to arch the lower back a little bit. So try tensioning your core and activating some of those glute muscles to push your hips forward as your arms go behind you. Notice how the uh, chin starts to go forward. Can you keep a slight tuck of the chin? Try to lengthen up through the crown of your head. And then next time the strap goes behind you about the level of the chest, pause there, squeeze your shoulder blades, but try to tear the strap apart. We'll take about five slow breaths through the nose. Try to draw the shoulders away from the ears a little bit. One more breath. And then inhale, reach up to the sky. And exhale, relax down. And you can roll the shoulders up and back, big circles. Good. And then standing tall, draw both shoulders away from the ears. And then bring your left ear towards the left shoulder. Lower chin to chest, coming across center and then right ear to right shoulder. And then move across center, lifting the heart. And repeat, ear to shoulder, other side, and ear to shoulder. Maybe you can feel a stretch happening around the side of your neck or even between the neck and the shoulder. We have our upper traps. Very good. Okay, second round. Hold the yoga strap again. You might bring the hands a little closer together this time. Closer to shoulder width. And then try to turn your shoulders, externally rotating. So thumbs are up. If you're wider than shoulder width, that's really great too. So thumbs up, shoulders away from ears. And then feet roughly parallel. Inhale, reach the arms straight up. Exhaling, come down. And repeat. Inhale, reach straight up. Exhaling, slowly come down. A few more to go. So we're working the external rotation of the shoulder, keeping the chest broad and open as the arms go overhead. What we're trying to avoid is the slumping forward like that. Good, one more to go. So inhale to reach up. Pause at the top. If your shoulder hurts, bring your shoulder forward a little bit more. And now we'll bend the knees. Turn both hips out, pivoting over the heels like we did in the beginning. Take a breath in, tearing the strap apart. As you exhale, side bend over to your left, contracting the left side of the core. And then using the right side of the core, come up. Other side, exhale. And as you inhale, come up. And a few more. Exhale to the left. Use the right side of the core to bring you up. Exhale to the right and use the left side of the core to bring you up. A few more to go. These dynamic movements are really great for creating heat as well as body awareness. See where it feels good. See where the sticking points are. And then side bend to the left. We're gonna hold this one about five breaths. So first straighten your top arm and then pull up 
and then straighten the bottom arm and gently pull down, matching the resistance in both directions. Left side of the core is strong. Heavy heels make the glutes strong. And maybe you find a nice stretch through the right side of your spine from the hip through the side of the belly all the way up to the armpit and your lats. Feel free to lift the shoulder blades higher, lifting the shoulder blades up to the ears. And then engaging both sides of the core, inhale up to center, straight legs to relax. Exhale, bend your knees and other side. So top arm is pulling up, bottom arm pulls down and breathe deep. If you feel soreness in the shoulder, try taking the shoulders further forward in front of the face. This helps spread the shoulder blades apart, engaging serratus anterior. And then from that awareness, maybe you go further back again. Maybe not, and that's okay as well. Two more breaths, matching the resistance both directions. Maybe there's a nice stretch in the left side of the spine. And then engaging the left side of the core, slowly come up. Oh, relax down, awesome. Roll the shoulders up and back. And then one last position with the strap, so you can hold it a little bit looser. And then we're gonna bring the arms over the head and behind us, feet about hip width, parallel. And then loop your shoulders up and back, squeezing between shoulder blades, lift the heart. Engage the front of your thighs and spread the toes. Take a few breaths here. As you squeeze the shoulder blades, can you lift the strap away from your spine, away from your sacrum? Good, one more breath. On your next exhale, bend the knees and fold forward. So the belly is between the thighs. And hang out for five breaths, squeezing the shoulder blades. You can also play with a little bit of movement, twisting side to side, rotation in the spine. Very slowly let go of the strap. You can just set it aside beside your mat here and then hold on to opposite elbows in ragdoll. Go bend your knees again, let the torso hang loose. If you'd like to straighten the legs, feel free. Engaging the front of the thighs, the toes spread and then root. Play with leaning the weight forward and back, rooting into the heels and then rocking into the balls of the feet. And then exhale, let go of your elbows. Bring your hands to your waist this time and try to come up with a neutral spine, a straight back. So we're gonna bend the knees more, lift the heart, engage the upper back. If your lower back hurts, push through your heels, engaging the buttocks and core, and then slowly come up. Great, and then we'll all meet in mountain pose. And then bring the hands together at heart center, shoulders away from ears. And we'll warm up the wrists a little bit. So as you press your palms together, uh, shoulders away from ears, slowly draw the hands down towards the belly. Shoulders away from ears, and then guide the hands up towards the sternum, towards the heart. Again, draw the hands down, elbows move outwards a bit. So we're moving into greater and greater range of motion in the wrist. And then bring the hands up and do a few more like that. Now the hard part is gonna be keeping the uh, lower palms together as you go down. This is a really good way of uh, training your wrist so that your hands can bear weight in things like push-ups without feeling any pain in the wrist. Good, then we're gonna to go to the bottom just to the point where you feel a minor amount of discomfort. Maybe you stay there, maybe you back off a little bit. Now try to lift the tips of your fingers away from each other, keeping the lower palms together. So we're really activating uh, through the forearm towards the top of the hand. Okay, good, and relax. So backs the hands together now, make some little circles with the wrists.
Very good. And then relax your arms by your sides. Loop the shoulders up and back, lifting the heart. Good. Now with your exhale, bend your knees, press the hands into each other. Good. And then as you inhale, slowly reach the arms up, standing tall. And then exhale, press one hand on top of the other, bend your knees, heavy on the heels. Inhale, reaching the arms up, slowly standing tall. Repeat that a few more times. So on the exhale, you press one hand into the other, creating resistance in both directions. Inhaling, reach up and try to switch which hand is on top with each repetition. Shoulders drawing away from the ears as the hands press into each other. Good, last one. And then relax in standing. With an inhale, reach the arms out to the sides. And then pause in this position and make some circles with the wrists. So we're curling the fists in towards the forearms. Big circular movements. Snap, crackle, pop. Changing directions. Good. And now press out through your hands and then turn one shoulder inwards and turn the other shoulder outwards. And reverse. And there's different ways to do this. You might find that turning your shoulders affects the position of your spine. Usually it does. Try to stabilize the spine so the movement is more limited to the shoulder joint. Not that this is better, it's just a, a way of exploring uh, the shoulder in more detail. And then go ahead and make some more movement. It just feels good. Good. And then we'll come back to the center and relax the arms down. So stand next to a wall for extra balance if you need it. You could have your left foot closest to the wall, a table, whatever you can hold on to. And then we'll play with transferring the weight into the left foot by leaning the whole body over the left ankle. So try that a few times, leaning over the left ankle and then over to the right. Can you feel that shift of weight transfer? As you lean over that left foot, can you keep rooting down through the ball of the foot? And then we'll lean into that left foot, pick up your right heel, pick up the right knee, and then make some circles in the right hip joint. Keep a little bit of bend in your standing leg as you root down through the heel and the ball of the foot. We'll make some circles in one direction, turning the hip out, pressing the knee out to the right. Maybe you can feel the buttocks contracting and then change five more in the other direction. And then we'll switch legs. So feet about hip width to start. If you're on the wall, you can have your right foot closest to the wall. And then play with the weight transfer, leaning the pelvis over the right ankle and then over the left. Just going back and forth. That's really the key to one-legged balancing is shifting the center of gravity over the balance point. So in a standing pose, that balance point is uh, your heel. If you're doing a handstand, it becomes your hand. But the balance point is always going to be the, uh, or the center of gravity is always going to be around the pelvis area. So we'll shift over that right foot now, lift your left leg up and make some big circles in the left hip. So we can lift the knee to the center, keep core tension, and then bring that knee out to the left, big circles. Awakening all these little stabilizers in the hip. Pressing the knee out to the side. Little bit of bend in the standing leg. And then change directions with the left leg. Five more. Maybe you feel the inner thigh working more now. Very good. And we'll come back to center. Again, shift weight into the left foot. So you can have the left hand on the wall. And then we'll lift the right leg up. Feel free to use your hand to help the foot along the inside of your left leg. And you could be anywhere on that leg. Bring it up, bring it up as high as possible. Good, and then find a balance point. 
Rooting through the heel, direct the eyes to a single place. Maybe you take the hands off the wall to heart center. For an extra challenge, slowly lift the arms up to the sky. Engaging through the front of the thigh, the toes root, the toes spread. Can you share the weight between the ball of the foot and the heel? If the arms are reaching up, can we keep the shoulders externally rotated? Palms facing each other. Can we draw the core in a little bit so the tailbone drops, lower back lengthens, out of compression. And then very slowly bring the hands to heart center and then lower the right foot down. And we'll switch sides. Right hand closer to the wall. Lean the pelvis over the right ankle and then take the left foot up as high as it'll go. As long as your knee's feeling good. So maybe you're using the wall. Try to push off the wall to lean your pelvis over your ankle. Good. Next step, hands to the heart, keeping that steady focal point. Engage the muscles around the knees. The fronts of thighs are strong. Can you feel the back of the calf engaging as the ball of the foot roots? Can you feel the buttock engaging as the heel roots? Option to lift the arms up. And keep gazing steadily at one point. Core is drawing in. Very good, and then very slowly bring the hands back to the heart and lower the left foot down. Great, then we'll come back to mountain pose. Loop your shoulders up and back. Now keeping the legs parallel and strong. With your next inhalation, reach the arms straight up to the sky, palms face each other. And then exhaling, turn the palms towards the floor and bring your arms by your sides. And repeat, inhale, reaching straight up. Exhale, palms down, arms at sides. And repeat a few more, moving with your breath. And the breathing technique involves breathing through the nose for one. And secondly, we try to control the breath, gently constricting the back of the throat like a whisper. And then same thing in reverse. Inhale, arms out to the sides, and then bring the shoulders slightly forward just before you reach up to the sky. And then exhale, out to the sides, arms down. Inhale, open the chest, and then reach forward, spreading the shoulder blades. And then exhale, lowering. As you get around shoulder height, you can squeeze the shoulder blades closer. And a few more. Keeping the squeeze for the first half of the movement, and then shoulders forward, spreading the shoulder blades. Exhale, reversing the movement. And play around with it. See what feels good in your shoulder. If you're finding spreading the arms hurts, try reaching straight up to the sky and then straight down. Work with that for a little while, then gradually build up. And so we're going to take that same overhead position to do uh, what I call downward dog on the wall or wall dog. So uh, you bring the hands about the level of your chest or so. We're going to spread the fingers wide and keep the arms about shoulder width apart, feet or hip width, and then we step away from the wall. The emphasis is on keeping the back straight. You may have to step even further away, bend your knees, and as you push through the fingers, try to keep that sense of externally rotating the shoulders, opening up through the chest. And the key is very gentle effort. Most people tend to overdo it in this, so very gentle. Use like 20% of your available muscle. And we're focusing on the position of the spine. So you can think of creating a little bit of a back bend, a few more breath there. Really opening the chest up. And then a little bit of abdominal strength can draw the front ribs in. And then pushing off the wall, slowly come up to standing. And we'll take a moment to rest 
can make some circles with your wrists, pressing the backs of the hands together for a few breaths. And I'm just going to visually show you that movement of the shoulders. So when we reach forward, there is a tendency for the shoulders to bunch up. So what we do is uh, externally rotate. It's like scrubbing dishes away from each other. So that if you were to start with your index fingers touching, by the end of this rotation, index fingers will be aiming up. So let's try that on the wall. You can bend your knees just like you did before. Press your hips back. Start with your index fingers aiming at each other. That's inward rotation. And then start to work the pose as you scrub your hands away from each other. Index fingers aim up. Start to push the hips back, opening the chest. And we'll take about five slow breaths. Think of taking the shoulders forward towards the floor to spread the shoulder blades apart. So shoulders towards the floor. Heart is opening and lifting. Try to create some space and length between the belly and the pubic bone. And then using your core, push off the heels. Slowly come on up. Very good. And we'll shake the wrists out a little bit. And now we'll make our way to table position. So you can take your hands to the front of your mat, bend your knees, and place the knees on the floor. So if this is uncomfortable for your knees already, you might want to grab a, a couple pillows to put under your knees, or you can take the middle portion of your mat and fold it over about five inches or so. And the great thing about the fold is you get a triple pad, and it's going to stay there for a while. So we'll come into table pose, spreading the fingers wide, and we're working with the same rotation in our shoulders. So this would be inward rotation, try to scrub out towards a more neutral or externally rotated position. Good. So we scrub the hands out, spread the fingers almost as wide as possible and try to root through all the knuckles. And then take an inhale breath, look forward, let the shoulder blades draw closer together. As you exhale, round your back, pushing through the hands, tuck in the chin. Inhale, look slightly forward and draw the shoulder blades closer together, softening the effort. And as you exhale, push through the hands, engaging your abs, round your back. And continue a few more on your own. So if it hurts to look forward, not necessary. You can keep the head more neutral, slight tuck of the chin. Good. A few more to go like that. So on the inhale, shoulder blades a little bit closer, squeezing. Exhale, pushing, spreading the shoulder blades apart. Can you feel a contraction around your armpit? This pushing action is helping us connect with serratus anterior, the muscle that spreads the shoulder blade out, and the MVP of shoulder stability. So now the challenge is going to be to keep that online as we move back towards the heels. Um, and be mindful of not dumping like that. We're trying to keep the integrity of the shoulder joint and the core online. So we're just moving back a little bit towards the heels, very slow, keeping all the connections in the shoulder that we had in the round back pose. And then inhale, come forward again, keeping the spine round. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades. Inhale, push through the hands, round your back. Exhale, core on, sit back. And then you continue with that movement. Inhale to the table, rounding the back. Exhale, squeezing the shoulder blades. Inhale, pushing through, spreading the shoulder blades. Exhale, slowly sitting back. And two more to go on your own. Last one. And then as you finish, walk your hands towards your knees. Tuck your toes under like a toe squat. And you can come up into this camel position. We'll make some circles with our wrists, arms out to the sides like wings. And then round two. So you can repeat the same variation we just did. Uh, the next one's a progression. So from table, we would take the hands forward another 
let's say three to five inches and kind of feel it out in your own body. And then same idea, we push through the hands, rounding the back, take a breath in. Now as you exhale, a little bit of squeeze in the shoulder blades, bend your elbows, sending them back about 45 degrees. Inhaling, push up, keep your core on line, round your back. Exhale, sit towards heels. And repeat, inhale, come forwards, all the fingers are spreading, knuckles rooting. Exhale, little bit of squeeze between the blades, bend your elbows, coming down with the hips. Inhale, tuck your chin, use your core to push up. Exhale, sit back slowly, keeping the core active. And a few more to go. Inhale, coming forward. On that exhale movement, think of the elbows moving back, about 45 degrees. Inhaling, push up. Exhaling, sit back slow. Nice last one. So on this last one, take about three breaths to come all the way to the floor. Bending the elbows really slow, that's one. Gradually retract the shoulder blades a little more. Two. One more breath. Hips lower, upper back strong. And three, beautiful. And feel free to move back a little bit. And we'll bring the forearms to the floor. Just a little bit forward of the shoulders. And then bring your elbows a little bit wider than your hands. Karate chop the floor with the palms facing each other. This is biasing external rotation. And then let your heart melt down, bring the shoulder blades closer, activating the upper back. As you inhale, pull back with your hands, lifting the heart up. Slowly lift the feet up. And then exhale, come all the way down. Inhale, pull with the forearms, lift the heart. Squeeze the heels, try to lift your knees. Exhale, come all the way down. Keeping the face relaxed. Inhale slowly, rising up. Exhale, slowly come down. Again, inhale, pull back, bring the heels together, knees wide apart. Exhale, down, last one. Inhale, pull back, lifting the heart, lift the knees. We're going to hold this one, so you can bring your palms to the floor this time. And then bring each hand back a little bit closer, so your belly is still touching the ground. Emphasis is on looping the shoulders and then pulling back, activating between the shoulder blades. So do a few of those loops. Letting the shoulders lift to the ears and then we squeeze the blades a bit and pull your hands in towards your hips. We're gonna hold this for five more breath. Squeeze your heels, contracting the buttocks. Try to lift your knees up. Pull with the hands, three more breath. Face is relaxed. If your lower back hurts, come down more. You can still work the upper back by lowering to the floor and then lifting the arms as a good modification. And then exhale all the way down. Very good. And we're actually all going to do the modification now because it's a really great pose. So um, bending the arms like cactus branches, thumbs up. With an inhale, lift your shoulders off the floor, lift your forearms and hands, activating the upper back. From there, squeeze your heels, try to lift your knees just a little bit to your own comfortable degree, holding the pose, working the upper back. Try to keep the back of the neck relaxed. Work the arms, work the upper back. And exhale, <sighs> relax down. Good. And then keeping the cactus in the arm, bring your left arm out to the side. The whole forearm comes out. We're going to plant the palm, right fingers underneath the right shoulder. And then you can relax your feet to the floor. From there, we're going to roll over towards that left side. So you're sort of resting on the left pec. And then try to squeeze your left shoulder blade to your middle back, maybe lifting the heart away from the floor more. Maybe you're bringing the right foot behind you and bending the knee for a bit more support. The idea is to feel a bit of a stretch in the left chest, left pec region, front of the shoulder perhaps. And 
And then back to center, we'll do the other side. So right arm bending like a cactus branch, then bring the whole forearm further out to the right. Left fingers under the shoulder, and then roll over, planting the right palm. Bring the left foot behind you, and breathe. So again, this could be more passive, or you can make it more active, retracting the shoulder blades, looping the shoulders. Ooh. And then try to lift the heart away from the floor. Three more breaths. Head is neutral, slight tuck of the chin, tall through the crown of the head. Very good, and then slowly come back to center. Bring your legs together. Bring your arms out to the sides, thumbs up. And then squeezing the inner thighs, activate the inner thigh muscles. And then with an inhale, lift your legs and lift your arms off the floor. Exhale, slowly come down. Head can be neutral. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the legs. Exhale down. If you're feeling sore in your neck, try keeping your forehead on the ground, only lifting the arms and the legs on the inhale. Exhale down. Two more to go. If it feels comfortable to lift the head, feel free to do so. And focus on gazing down the nose. And then lift everything up. Hold for five breaths. Strong in the upper back. Notice the expansions of the inhalation radiating out through the ribs and the heart. The belly is massaged against the ground with each breath in. And exhale all the way down. Beautiful. Hands under your shoulders. Push back. Coming into it's called the puppy dog. So we bring the pelvis just over the knees. And then walk the hands a little bit further forward. And this is just like what we did on the wall, just like the wall dog. So we'll walk the hands forward a bit and then bow the forehead towards the floor. Good. If you feel pain in your shoulder, try lifting your head off the floor more. So you're really working the spreading of the shoulder blades, scrubbing the hands away from each other. As you get comfortable bringing the forehead to the ground, try this one out. Come onto the tips of your fingers, lifting the forearms and the palms away from the floor. Try to keep that external rotation of the shoulder. And then just imagine trying to lift the arms off the floor. Engage your abdominal core. Three more breaths. Can you feel the breath flowing through the back of the spine? Good, and then walking the hands in, push up to table posture. Bring the toes to touch, knees wide apart. Knees can be on that padded form again. And we'll emphasize a little more external rotation in the shoulders. So maybe your index finger is forward. If your middle finger is forward, that's a little bit less external rotation. And both ways are good. See what feels good. With your next inhalation, open the right arm out to the side. Open the chest. Exhale, thread the needle, reaching underneath left arm. Again, inhale, open the right arm up. And then exhale, gliding the hand along the surface of the floor. Continue at your own pace. So if you'd like an extra challenge this morning, try to keep the jaw relaxed as you hover the whole arm above ground. And if that feels like too much, then just let your hand glide along the floor. You can choose the benefit that you get. Maybe you're working on your twisting. Maybe you're focusing more on opening the body. Really opening by reaching the arm up. Good. One more to go. And on the next exhale, we're going to thread the needle, reach through, holding for about five breaths. So as you slide the fingernails along the floor, you can actively press the back of the hand into the ground, strengthening the right shoulder. If you want to test that shoulder strength, try lifting your left hand a few inches. Three more breaths. Can you connect with the right side of your core? Attempting to hike the right hip, 
to create more space along the left side. And deep breath. And then planting the left hand. Inhale, right arm up to the sky. Open up through the chest. Exhale, back to center, lowering the hand. Switch sides. Inhale, left arm opens, chest open. Exhale, thread the needle, spreading the shoulder blade out. Again, inhale, raising the arm. Root through all the knuckles of your right hand. Exhale, gliding along the floor or hovering. And then a few more of these breath-linking movements, vinyasas. Moving with awareness, slowing the breath by constricting the back of the throat. And then threading through, we'll pause for five breath, gliding the fingernails along the floor. Reach as far out to the right as you can comfortably. Keep the support of your right hand. And then try to activate the left shoulder muscles by pressing the back of that left hand to the floor. Test the circuitry by keeping your core online and hovering the right hand an inch or so. And you might have some other variations you like to do. That's fine as well. Try to create length along the right side of the spine while contracting more along the left side of the core. And then planting the right palm. Inhale to rise up, lifting the left arm again. Exhale, center, planting the left hand. So right side again. Inhale, open up. This time we're going to pause, open your chest as much as you can. And then one way to do that is activate the left shoulder abductor is by pushing the hand out to the left, even though it's glued to your sticky mat. And this helps us open the right chest a lot more. So as you keep the chest open, bring your hand back by your hip, palm facing the floor, and then reach forwards by your ear, thumbs up. And then as you reach up to the sky, gradually turn your palm to the ground. And then as you reach forward, thumbs up. This is a sign of external rotation. Shoulder rotates in as we reach by the hip. And then we'll end up in external rotation as we reach forward. So continue exploring. See what feels good. Exploring the rhythm between the upper arm bone and the shoulder blade. The scapulohumeral rhythm. And so there's options. As you reach forward and up, you might get more opening through the chest. Maybe that's where you do the work today. The progression is reaching towards the floor and then forward past the front of the mat, bicep just above the ear. We'll take five breath, holding the posture. Think of really working that external rotation pattern, broadening across the chest and collarbones. Strong in the left side of the core, lengthening the right side of the belly. Three more breaths. And then exhale, right hand down. We'll do the other side. Inhale, left arm comes up. Good, so try to really work it here, pressing the right hand off to the right side while drawing the shoulder away from the ear. Can you feel the upper back strengthening on the right and then big circles with the top arm? So reach up to the sky and then we turn the palm down internally rotating and then we reach forward with external rotation. So the shoulder blade spreads out to the armpit as we reach forward and then naturally there's a bit more squeeze to open the chest as we reach up. Feel your way through the movement, feel free to close your eyes. Keep adapting the movement to your needs. If a certain part of it doesn't feel right, then listen to your body. Do what does feel right. And then you can either reach up to the sky, pausing here. Option two is a bit more challenging, reaching the arm by the ear. And this trains the shoulder for things like downward dog, which we've done a few of today, some modified forms. So thumbs up to get more external rotation and breathe. The weight-bearing arm 
shoulder can draw away from the ear, but the top arm, we're lifting the shoulder blade to the ear. Three more breaths. Very good. Exhale, come down, relax. Awesome. And then we'll come up into the camel position once more. Roll the shoulders up and back. And so we're still working with the shoulder. I call this one saluting the camel. So we'll bring the hands uh, to the sacrum, to the lower back. And really common to slump as soon as you bring the arms back. So try looping the shoulders, open your chest up, really proud. A little bit of tension in the core to lift the pubic bone in the front. And then with an inhale, uh, reach your right arm out to the side and then come forward, externally rotating. Exhaling, come back to center. And repeat. Inhale, right arm out to the side, and then we go forward to get that spread of the shoulder blade. And exhale, bring the hand behind the back. So continue with that movement. We're going to add movement through the hip. So as you exhale, bow forward, drawing the buttocks back to keep the spine straight for the first bit of the movement, and then round in. Inhale, rise up, lift the right arm. And repeat, exhale, bringing the hand behind the back, squeezing the shoulder blade to the middle back. Inhale, reach up, spreading the shoulder blade out. Exhale, shoulder comes in, and we squeeze the shoulder blade to middle back. A few more to go. Good, once more. And then we'll pause as we bow forward, squeeze the right shoulder blade to the middle back. As you keep that squeeze, try to lift your fist off of your spine. It might be impossible. Just imagine doing that. Pressing the knuckles into your back is a nice way to help that movement along. Over time, lift the hand. Keep squeezing the shoulder blade to middle back. Very good. And then inhale all the way up. Then on your next exhale, tension the core. And then we'll bring that left foot around towards the front. So if you feel any discomfort in your knee, this would be a good time to grab a cushion and put it underneath the right knee. I'm using a pillow from my couch. Best prop out there. So feet are roughly hip width or so. And then we'll keep the right arm up close to the ear. Bend the elbow. And then use your other hand to gently press the elbow back. Opening your chest. And now we create a little bit of resistance. So push your elbow forward into your hand, but not so much that you lose the pose. Gentle resistance, matching in both directions. Good, now you're gonna hold that position. As you breathe in, slowly bend your front knee to your own comfortable degree. As you exhale, push off the heel to activate the buttocks, lift the pubic bone. Inhaling, slowly bend the knee. Exhale, push off the heel, consciously contracting the buttock. And then once more. And to see where it feels good. Where do you feel a stretch in the front of your right hip? Where does your lower back feel good? And then we'll pause. Tensioning your core, side bend, leaning over to the left. Imagine that right hip pushing forward. Imagine the left hip pulling back by dragging the heel back. And then release the pose and we'll switch legs. Coming back to the camel form, hands behind the back. And with an inhale, bring the left arm up. Exhale, bowing forward, squeezing the shoulder blade to middle back. Inhale, rise up, lifting the arm, externally rotating. And then exhale, bowing forward. Continue at your own pace. So the top of that inhale, it's like celebrating a victory, lifting a chalice. And then exhale, folding over. Good, last vinyasa. And then exhale, bowing. Squeeze the shoulder blade, the middle back, and hold the posture. So phase one is just working on that shoulder loop up to the ear, and then squeeze the shoulder blade and draw down a little bit. Phase two is keeping all that and attempting to lift the whole 
arm away from your spine. So the forearm lifts, maybe the fist comes up. Working the active range of motion in the back of the shoulder. This kind of stuff is a really big game changer. And then next inhale, come up, lifting that left arm. Good, and then we'll do the other side. So tension your core and bring the right foot around somewhere near the right edge of the mat so the feet are hip width or so. Feel free to pad that left knee. And then we'll play around with the squatting action. So keeping the left arm up, inhale to bend your knee to your comfortable degree, turning the hip out a little. Exhale, push off the heel, tensioning the core in the buttock. And repeat a few times. If you feel uncomfortable in the knee as it bends, try bringing your foot further forward. Giving yourself a little more room to play with. And then next exhale, reverse the movement, tensioning the core and the glutes. Find a sweet spot, bend the elbow, keep the arm close to your head so you have that external rotation and then match the resistance, pushing the elbow gently into your hand and then using the hand to push back. Gentle effort, both directions. And then connect with your legs. Can you squeeze the legs towards each other? Pressing the left hip forward, pulling the right hip back. Can you work the buttocks, pushing that left hip forward? And then five more breath or side bend to the right, stretching more through the left side of the spine, from the front of the hip, through the belly, all the way into the left armpit. Keeping that bicep close to the ear. And then reverse the movement. Very good. Good, so we'll undo the fold of the mat. Bring the legs out in front. And we'll all meet in a seated position. Looping the yoga strap around the balls of the feet. So hold each end of the strap loosely. If you have a resistance band at home, that's also a really good tool for this type of thing. And then imagine rowing a boat. So we're bending our knees so we can find our neutral spine. Good. As you exhale, come forwards, and then inhale, pull back with the arms. Exhale, come forwards, inhale, pull back. And once more, exhale, hinge forward, inhale, pull back and hold. So if the strap is quite loose, you might even be able to squeeze between the shoulder blades, draw the shoulders away from ears, and then see how much you can straighten the legs while keeping the heart lifted. The lower core is strong. Just below the navel, there's a little sucking inwards to help lift the whole rib cage up and out of the pelvis. And then take another inhale, lifting the heart. Exhale, option to walk the hands further up the strap, folding to your own comfortable degree. If you are quite flexible, you might have straight legs holding on to the feet, and that's fine as well. And then with an inhale, slowly come up tall. Exhale, bend your knees, placing the soles of the feet on the floor, just in front of the buttocks, holding the legs, take a breath in. And as you exhale, gradually slide the hands down the thighs, using your core to lay down. And then inhaling, tuck the chin, root into your heels, slowly coming up. Exhale, sliding down the thighs, slowly lay down. One more. Inhale, sliding up. Engaging the abdominal core. Exhale, sliding down. And as you make your way onto your back, you can bring the right leg up, loop a strap around the ball, the right foot, holding both ends in the right hand. Or if you actually have a loop, you can just put that around the ball of the foot. And we'll start by straightening the leg, contracting the quadricep muscles. So give the rope some slack so you can get the leg straight. And then push your peace fingers into the top of the thigh bone so you can really engage the quadriceps in its entirety. And then explore flexing toes to shin, gently pulling back on the strap. This can bring the stretch more into the back of the calf, a common tight area. Some of you might feel it in the hamstrings as well. And 
and then holding the strap with the right hand. As you exhale, bring the leg over to the right, bent knee over to the left, inhale, center, and continue. Exhale, bring the legs away from each other, inhale, center. So we're trying to keep the spine perfectly still. There is movement happening uh, in the hip joints. It's the thigh bones turning outwards, abducting. Good, if you're quite flexible, maybe you keep both legs straight. Try to keep your left leg totally still as you create movement in the right hip joint. So this requires you really connect with your core and try to anchor the left buttock to the floor. And then we'll open up to the right side and pause. Keep pulling back on the strap, gentle tension, and breathe. Shoulder away from the ear, especially in the pulling arm and match the resistance, pushing your foot out into the strap. So now we're active in the range of motion. That's the range of motion that we can really play with. Next inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, keep the legs straight, explore pulling back just a little bit more. Maybe you flex your toes to your shin to get into the calf again. And then let go, bringing the left leg up either to loop or you can hold both ends of the strap. Front of the thigh is strong and we'll take some breath here pressing the thigh bone forward fully straighten the leg connect with the quads flex the toes to the shin and pull back helping to get more to that calf stretch. And then next exhale, create movement, bringing the leg out to the left, bent knee the other way, inhale, center. And again, exhale, gently pull back to the left, inhale, center, and keep on going. You can start to make some big circles in the left leg as well. If you know you're quite flexible, you can keep your right leg straight. It's not better, it's just a different way of exploring it. And as the leg opens to the left, try to keep the right buttock firm on the ground. You're going to have to really contract the entirety of the right leg to maintain that connection. It's a really interesting place to explore. And I find a lot of these uh, poses on the floor, they refine our awareness to change how we stand, how we walk, how we move, how we talk. Well, maybe that last part's not true, but we can bring this awareness into all parts of our lives. And then we'll open to the left, pause. About five breath there, matching the resistance, keeping the front of the thigh firm. If you feel the muscles bulging up in the left hip flexors, try squeezing your buttocks a little bit and that can shut off the hip flexors. And then slowly come back to center. Take a few more breath in the middle. Option to flex toes to shin, pulling back a little more. Good, and then slowly release. Take the right leg up. This time hold the strap with the left hand and shift the hips over to the right edge of the mat. So keeping that right leg straight, exhale, bring both legs over to the left. Right leg can hover as you pull back a little bit and then create some resistance by pushing your foot out into the strap without actually leaving the stretch. You're just creating a little bit of resistance. If you'd like to give yourself a really nice hands-on assist, you could take your right hand into the right hip crease and then press the thigh away from the belly. And this has the effect of externally rotating the hip just a little bit, or we could say moving us more towards neutral instead of hiking up the right hip. And this is one of those things that I try to do in all of my standing poses in everyday life as well. I have to be really mindful getting on and off the bicycle, you know. So a few more deep breaths. Maybe you feel a stretch in the right hip. Maybe there's a stretch in the belly. You can even open up your right arm to stretch the chest.
and then back to center. And we'll switch sides, taking the left foot into the loop. You can bend your right leg, resting the right foot on the floor. And we'll move the hips over to the left edge of the mat, fully straight in the top leg. On your next exhale, open the leg over towards the right. Try to straighten the leg as you gently pull back. And then introduce that hands-on assist, rolling your left thigh bone away from the belly. Creating more space in the hip joint, more freedom, less tension in the hip flexors. If you're kind of cramped for space doing this, um, which I am in this position, you can even push your heel into the wall and that'll have the effect of engaging the muscles in the back of the thigh, the hip extensors, maybe the glutes. And when we engage the hip extensors, that helps to relax the hip flexors. Option to open that left arm up, a few more breaths. Very good, and then releasing the pose back to center. Center your hips on the mat, and windshield wiper the legs side to side with both knees bent, feet as wide as the mat, arms out like wings. back to center and you can stretch your feet out to the corners of the mat moving into relaxation bring your arms by your sides palms facing up option two is relaxing in a supported fish variation placing one yoga block underneath the shoulder blades and a second yoga block at the back of the head different ways to do it I like to have the uh, upper back support on its lowest height and then the head supported on the next height up So the block goes below the neck. The neck is in free space. The back of the skull is supported. And the arms can be out to the sides. There's also the option to reach the arms back overhead. But find a pose that you can relax into, letting go of the body. Knees bent or straight. Welcome you to remain here for another five, ten minutes. As long as you have this morning. And thank you very much for practicing today. I'm going to leave you to come out of Shavasana on your own when you're finished. Uh, namaste, everybody. Thanks so much.